Greetings everyone and welcome to a new episode of the JustCast. We're joined here today by three special guests. Our first guest is Old Gamer, who is recognized within the Mugen community as one of the key developers behind Ikimen, showcasing his expertise in Ikimen coding. Not only that, Old Gamer also holds the title of the community's best problem solver, generously assisting Mugen fans with their Mugen and Ikimen related issues. He is well known for his screen packs, so make sure to check him out. Our second guest today is DJ Meuf, the creator of Dragon Ball Generations, a Mugen game that showcases the iconic Dragon Ball characters using extreme Butuden sprites. And finally, our third guest, Lord Diablo, that is working on his own game called Extreme Versus, that is heavily inspired by Marvel vs. Capcom. So, let's start with our first topic. Copyright issues surrounding the use of licensed characters in Mugen and Ikimen. Old Gamer, what do you think? You go first. Yes, I believe that the engines are still a working progress. I mean, we're still developing it as we go. The teams are always open for suggestions and also the, the engine itself is open source. So anything that we implemented to the engine, we share that with the developers. And that is Kato's, who's in charge of that project, along with Windblade and other developers. They actually take the time to, to improve the engine to do that. Now, the issue with the Eichmann is that it's never going to be perfect, you know what I mean? Because it always has some room to improve. But over time, we definitely improve the engine. Now, as character goes, I am not an expert, but you can go ahead and talk to DJ and also uh, Lord Diablo about that issue. Did you ever stumble upon copyright issues? No, no copyright issue because Eichmann allows you to uh, build your own game as long as you're not using... Um, Game, video game content like for example if you want to say you want to make a Marvel vs. Capcom Supreme you can't sell that but if you built your game from scratch and make the code and that's the great thing about Eichmann is that you allow yourself to create and build 3D stages by using Blender along with making your own Lua coding you can also create your own mods so the engines allows you to 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 build your own game Longest is not something from like say Super Mario or Marvel Capcom Extreme as an example, but if your game is original, you can actually can copyright it and sell it. What are Mugen and Ikimen, and what sets them apart from other fighting game engines? The separate the, 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 the between Mugen and Ikemen is Ikemen can let you to do a lot of things. Actually, the the. The limitation is, 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 is a phenomenon, like if you want to make a stage where you want a character, any character, to fly on the, off the screen and float and get crashed by an airplane, you can do that. However, in Mugen, you have to do that on using a character to implement that. Uh, a creator by the name of Electro cre who was the first person who started the interactive uh, stages. But for that to work, you have to use it, treat it like a character. Same thing like for some for the life bar for Mugen. In Mugen, the, everybody knows about this life bar called the add-on 004. Everybody thinks that it's a life bar, but actually it's running by two things. It acts like a character, but it's implemented into a life bar. So anytime you do a counter hit or do a combo, the announcer will announce that. And that's the difference. Now, in Eichmann, you could actually can make your life bar to say, hey, uh, come, like for example, if you want to build a, uh, for example, Killer Instincts, you can actually, can, the announcer can actually can say that by separating the files. That's the big difference between Eichmann and Mugen. Yeah, I, I pretty much agree with um, Old Gamer. Um, <laughs> there, awesome. um, Mugen was created by a leg bite. And uh, it was pretty much it's discontinued, but uh, Eichmann is another open source that's still in development. It parted like three ways. Um, they went to uh, Eichmann Plus and, and Eichmann Go, and it's still in development now. I guess that's a huge difference because with Mugen, we kind of lost hope 
on Electabyte ever returning, but with Ikimen, there's hope that the developers will deliver an engine that all of Mugen um, users will be satisfied with. So yeah, that's actually a huge difference, I'd say. So the next question is, how easy or difficult is it to create costume characters, stages, and movesets in each engine? Um, Mugen and Eichmann, there are some limitations with Mugen and um, Eichmann is kind of more, I guess compared to Mugen, be more so limitless, but uh, the difficulty between them is really not much uh, different. Kind of follow the same code, and uh, the only difference is that Eichmann has extra features that you can, that allows you to have something, you know, compared to Mugen to be a lot different and uh, pretty much I catch stages. Um, as far as Mugen, the furthest that they've gotten to is Mugen 1.1, which introduced stage zooming. And then Eichmann, of course, also, you know, added that to his feature. Also has, like uh, O'Gramm said, uh, interactive stages. So it's more development, um, screen pack differences, character development is pretty much more just limitations or less limitations on like i agree with dj and i also like to add that um not only the the eichmann can uh do interactive but it has like i said it, it has there's a lot of room in improvement the difference has been between mugen is like DJ, like dj said it was made by elect bike and the problem with them is they they like to repeat the history if you go back, I mean, if you look back to the history, you can look into it. You you could definitely can see the big difference. But Eichmann, if it wasn't for Shin Hiryo, he was the original creator of Eichmann when it first started as a Lua coding. You know what I mean? Before he implemented, and and we would like to give thanks to Kados for his big effort because he started um, using the fork engine for it. And then at the, after that, that's when the development started to increase. He started listening to more, listening to the fans, and also helping all, everybody pitched in uh, to to make this great engine. It is, like I said, the engine, both engines have their limitations, but Eichmann has more room to improve than Mugen. Have you all heard of uh, what is it, Mugen Next? Is this? Have you all heard of this? I actually, yes, I have. So is this real or? Just some, just make up, made up stuff. You can make. Okay, Leon, do you want me to? Sh uh, yes, of course, this, of course. Uh, I, I think okay. I heard about yes. it, but not too much information. Yes, let me give you, let me give you some insight. So, Mugen Next is the supposed to be like the fork engine of, of Mugen 1.1, 1 .1 that mm. is actually recreated and developed by the same person who created and made Fighter Factory Studios Whoa. by mm. the help with all the all that. And uh, they've been working on it now. Secretly, th they they have not shown any um, progress at this time. They do have some videos of improvement of the engine, but no release or any kind of update at this time. So, what have they added to the engine? Like, what what's the difference between that and Mugen? Um, it's more improved. They 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 made it more light, more more fixable compared to the Mugen, because Mugen 1.1 has issues along with the with the with the Mugen 1.0 as well so they are actually trying to improve it to be more stable but more but has more features right now they only show they only show some videos of I, I'll link that to you uh, uh, Leon after after the interview uh, they got some cool features where they they, they actually have um, uh, mirror matches where you can actually can have a mirror like you can see a reflection of your character But they mm. have not been implemented yet to the engine. Is it trying to achieve the same thing that Ikiman is trying to like be the alternative of Mugen? No, because they what they want to do is they just want to improve the engine a little bit better and more stable They want to focus more in balance and stability than trying to compete with uh with Eichmann, and that's the thing. Uh, the fans started started questioning about that as soon as it was announced, and the, the developer made it very clear that we're not trying to compete against against Eichmann whatsoever. What are the differences in performance, compatibility, and ease of use between Mugen and Ikiman? The use of Mugen it, it has a lot of what you call RAM leak issues. You can't over 
it, it, it has what like let's like say if you want to have like a HD uh, 4K resolution, you can have that, but that can be like a low time loading. And the reason why is that because it's pushing too much of that RAM. I always had an argument with with some of the Mugen communities about that that uh, the Mugen always had a RAM issue leak in, into the engine, and the the develop the, the team of New Age Mugen made a patch. It's called the NT Core, and that allows you to reduce the size of the the RAM issue, but it still didn't do any good because when you get to over to a ex certain extent of RAM, you can see that it, it boosts up your speed, GPU and CPU off the chart. You know what I mean? Now, as Eichmann goes, uh, actually it does have a leak issue as well, but it's not as heavy or it's not as bad as Mugen. But they do fair, they do share, they do share a RAM, a RAM leak but not that heavily. They are actually working on making sure that that RAM leak does not happen with the Eichmann Go engine. The little experience I have with Mugen was it crashed a whole lot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I have not had those issues with Eichmann. Right, right. With the stuff you were doing. Oh, interesting. So yeah. basically, Eichmann is the better option for individuals for me, yeah. to develop stuff. Depending so, on what you're trying to create. You know what? That's true. Uh, current Can I like to add something? Yes, of course. I'm sorry. I don't mean to turn. Uh, like DJ and like DJ said, it depends on what you create, and that is actually a factor. Now, like I said, um, you can make it lightweight, like a feather, or you can make it heavy, as 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 a as, as a gaming PC can run it. When he said depends what you create, it's because when you're trying to create something for Eichmann, you're going by your computer specs performance and that adds to that you see let's say if i want to make an hd screen pack right and i want to make it like uh 1280 by 720p it'll you you could actually could use software to check what kind of ram is running on you see and like yes. a, and, and like like uh like the, the fellows here said about mugen bell creeping crashes yes so let's say you made it your your screen pack that had like 600 megabytes on the sprite data right away mugen will crash automatically or freeze you can't do anything it will sit there forever ike man on the other hand if he has 600 megabytes it will not crash however it will sit there for at least four minutes before your game even starts because it's loading not only the images it's loading the characters the stages the music the life bars everything that is compound so when you're making something for i think it's always best to keep it as medium as possible uh, people always ask me how can i make a screen pack to look like this but without, without the taking forever to load and i always tell people make it as light as a feather what are the current trends and innovations in Mugen and Ikiman development. Right now, we're like we're right now we're focusing on stability more, and also experimenting with 3D content, and also new features. Actually, we were planning on uh, having a future plan by the developer Sam. His name is Sam, and he went ahead and made a a a codec that allows you to play real time videos on Ikiman. Right now is not been set on stone but these are one of the features that we when we're going to be planning on putting on Eichmann and, and on the engine so no more using images to make intros you could actually can use mp4s to make your videos intros you could actually can implement Damn. it into the menu screen or versus screen and also on stages and intros for characters and or or i intro in general well that's awesome that's for me personally kind of the feature I'm most excited by is the 3D stages. Technically, we already have it, we can use it, but I would love to see more developers create more 3D stages because we don't really have that many of them as of now. I would rather see uh, some development about uh, sys types and um, choosing your music, you know, after you pick your stages. Oh, dude, that would be cool. Oh, yeah, that, I that, like, like that. Yeah. Um, let's see. Um, doing um, different type of gameplay modes, like um, like an adventure mode. Um, oh, like a story uh, mode. Story that sounds art. good. Mm -hmm. Right, right, right. 
um, kind of merge a uh, beat 'em up type of style gameplay in the story mode. Or maybe like um, diff like you choose different arcades where each arcade you fight against different individuals or something like that. Uh, I agree with DJ. The whole music select thing would be cool. Right? I I also like that idea that DJ proposed. I won't mind and more like destructible stages either. Ooh, <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, usually we need to co co um, code inside characters the possibility of destroying stages. But if it was an actual way to destroy stages, that would be hella comfortable and awesome. Mm -hmm. Though I guess it's a question: How would you code that? But yeah. So, memorable moments or favorite creations or significant events within the community. So I found this character online. The, it was a Goku. Thought it was dope. Got to playing with it. Got to mess around. You no, know, seeing what the coding was. Then I actually met the creator of that character. And I was like, that is a pretty cool moment. I never forget that. Is that David's Goku yeah. by any chance? Nope. I can't remember that guy's name. I think it was like DJ Mouth or something like that. I can't remember. <laughs> 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 Damn, what a coincidence. Uh, that was pretty dope. <laughs> DJ, what about you? Anything, any interesting or favorite uh, moment? Uh, Probably discovering, you know, Mugen for the first time, uh, learning about the, the system and creating my first character, or really more so editing my character and then releasing my first character to the community, getting good feedback and meeting and networking with a lot of people looking such as Diablo uh, old gamer and you know a lot of other people that I can name so just the fact that I kind of like got myself into the community and kind of created a name for myself is you know that's like one of the best things so far and probably getting that love and like you said feedback from individuals from fans and seeing how people appreciate right. your work right Old yeah. gamer, you probably have a lot of stories to tell, <laughs> but uh, is there a favorite one? I'm gonna keep. I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep it short. My no, no, it's not about short. I, I just imagine you probably have I, a I, huge I, list of them. But... <laughs> right, right, I do. But my my all time memorable time, it was Olanista. If it wasn't for him, I mean, I would not establish what I am today, because he gave me so much advice when I first encountered him for the first time. And then when I went ahead, see, it all started with, with Mega Man Robot Mayhem at first. But when I first met him, he always was on my side. He he always gave me the advice that he gave me. And also, I can never forget this, Electro. If it wasn't for Electro, he also gave, he was my mentor, he was my teacher. I actually sat down with him and talked to him. And he, he was an, an inspiration of what I am today. Wow. Okay. Well, for me, wait. Are you still in contact with him? No, we went our separate ways. But I still keep contact with Olanista time to time. Oh, that's cool. Okay, we all wish him the best. I guess for me, since I'm an ent entertainer. Oh wow, I I can't choose. There's a lot from people's feedback to my my um, content either to the videos that I made um, probably the the latest JUS of the year is probably the video I'm most proud of so that I would say is my uh, favorite and the creation I'm most proud of due to the um, creative idea that I had to go with and the way I did it but eh, honestly I can't say there's one moment there's a lot um, so, any advice for newcomers interested in getting started with Mugen or Ikiman? For Mugen, I, before you can jump on Ikiman, I say stick with Mugen. Because that was the beginning of everything. We all learn from Mugen. And if you want to learn how to make stages or screen packs, I say stick with, screen, uh, with stages first before screen packs. Because stages are pretty easy to understand. And once you understand how stages actually work, you know, and get to that point take your time and the great thing about it is it's okay to edit edit a stage that you like you can take a sprite and you can put it together and edit it because that's what you call building and learning and tweaking you're going to be dealing with a lot of trials and errors with that 
but once you start to learn because every person who actually makes stages they always take some resources from other games and they smash it together. We call them edit stages. This is where you can start learning how to develop your own stage. And then we have the, a, a confidence enough, move on to screen packs. And I then think, life bar. I think that's a good you know suggestion. What I'm and then, mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That's how you get started. And once you understand everything, then move on to Eichmann. Do not jump. A lot of people have a bad habit. They just they want to start off in Eichmann. But they don't know where to look. They have always have issues. Sometimes they have a bad habit where they they keep on using uh, President ne uh, Devon's uh, screen pack called uh, Infinite Kafka vs SNK a lot, and they are edit over that because they don't understand how the code system works and how everything works. But to get started from small, start off with Boogie, and then work your way up to the ladder. You know what's funny when you said president, I was like, oh damn, are we, are we going into politics now? But no, it was just a no. channel name, I guess. He <laughs> was his creator. He goes by the name of President Devin. He also uh, also part of the development of Ike Mingo. Well. <laughs> I was like, we involving politics now, damn. Uh, you know, it's, I think it's no. a great suggestion uh, starting off with something simple like stages because when. Yeah, jumping into screen packs or even characters might be a bit too complicating for someone and starting off with something simple as stages, you kind of get an idea or a simple understanding that then you can um, smoothly jump into something more complex, which are the other stuff. Uh, DJ, would you have any advice for newcomers who are interested uh, in starting off doing something in Mugen or Ikemen? Uh, yes, uh, I can just go from my experience. Uh, I know you said, OG said start with uh, stages. I started with characters. And I started from when Fighter Factor was first uh, introduced. So you can start as simply as learning how to change the color palettes of the characters. Um, next, you can learn about the code and pretty much label everything. And now there's a existence called YouTube University <laughs> that has tutorials to help you with your trial and error and you have um you can join other reach out to other uh coders to figure out any issues anything like that but uh yeah like og said trial and error is probably your best friend and um in reaching out for help huh i love that uh what about you diablo i would say starting out don't get discouraged there are a lot of people that would talk you down or tell you that your work isn't good but there are also a lot of people that's willing to help so you just got to find the right team to put around you like old gamer <coughs> sorry <laughs> <laughs> I, I i get that a lot i mean people always come up to me and say hey old gamer you know anything about characters i keep on telling them so many times i don't know anything about characters but i do know about stages and everything else but not i know the engine works but i don't know the character works mm -hmm. uh, so resources tutorials or communities recommended for beginners so basically are there any videos individuals or stuff you to recommend for beginners i recommend uh in youtube but guy by the name is ryan Yes. R-Y-O-N, he is a tutorial guru. Mm. Yes, because he actually, he has a lot of learning experience. Uh, he is the formal, formal CEO of a Mugen free-for-all. And uh, he, over the years, he always wanted to make, he wanted to make a, a, a character tutorial because a lot of people always ask, how you make characters? How you make characters? He took the time and made those videos. And the best experience he ex could, could explain it, it was through him. Now, if you want to learn up, mm -hmm, go ahead. No, I said, don't count yourself out because you got a lot of tutorials too. I, I was going to mention that, yes. But if you want to start off with something small or s something you want to learn, like stages, you can always check out my YouTube channel. I have baby steps on how to make stages and also screen packs and also a lot of information about Eichmann as well. Love it. Diablo, what about you? Uh, I was going to recommend OG. <laughs> I learned a lot of stuff from 
Thank you. Yeah, fair. So uh, before we we end the today's JustCast episode, <coughs> um, DJ, could you tell us a bit about the project that you're working on? Uh, yeah, it's called uh, Dragon Ball Generations. Uh, to be honest, I wasn't even about to make a, a full game. I was just gonna code characters and release, whether if it's you know different styles, different uh, genres, but. Uh, I was pretty much persuaded by a couple of friends of mine that, and a lot of feedback on YouTube and I started thinking of different ideas and, and here you are I'm about to make a full game and people are already giving me feedback so I got some testers uh, Diablo and a couple <laughs> of my guys so, you know they like to work and uh, they keep me encouraged because there'd be times where I kind of take a break and kind of yeah. and also don't be uh, discouraged by taking breaks. You know, sometimes it's needed to take a break to come up with another idea. So I take frequent breaks. Um, I, I want to add extra mechanics to the game. And so I take a lot of breaks and brainstorm a lot. DJ, is there an ex expected release date? <laughs> <laughs> uh... Judging by that laugh, I mean, damn. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm gonna say this. Uh, year maybe. There isn't this year, possibly. May I, I think I may want to do a uh, a beta, a real small beta, probably sometime this year. So, but Ooh. I didn't want to say it because you know a lot of people are gonna be. Hey, is it coming out yet? Yeah, you know, so it's a lot of people who, uh, who are eager to really you know try the game out. So yeah. Probably like a small demo sometime this year. Oh, awesome. Uh, obviously, everyone needs to be very patient because projects and game screen packs, it takes a lot a lot of time to make. You cannot pressure DJ to force it. Obviously, he puts a lot of time and effort into it, so be patient with it. His channel will be down in the description for anyone interested to check out what he's working on. Feel free to do so. Diablo, uh, c could you Good. tell us about your upcoming project? So my project is like 200 different Kung Fu men you can pick. <laughs> it's all different. No, I'm joking. <laughs> but, uh... I like that idea. That's the only character I use in my project. <laughs> April Fools. <laughs> Very well, late April like, Fools. <laughs> it started out as a uh, Marvel vs. Capcom project. And I've seen that everybody else is doing it, so I had to make mine stand out. So I just added a bunch of different characters that I liked from you know, different universes. And it kind of evolved into what it is now. Like it's a fast-paced 3v3 tag game. With a awesome. bunch of original characters in it. And is there a, an expected release date? Well, the beta was supposed to come out like last month. But then I upgraded to Eichmann 99, so yeah, I gotta redo a whole bunch of stuff. So it'll it'll take a bit time. It was delayed, but uh, yeah, okay. If you don't want to announce the release date yet, it's fine. But maybe when can we expect a beta? I'll say that a month too. Okay, well, great. So, old gamer. Uh, and obviously Diablo yeah. channel will be also down in the description. Anyone interested to check out his work? Old Gamer, you recently released a retro-styled screen pack. Is there anything we could expect from you in the future? Well, right now I'm putting all my projects on hold because I'm, of course, I'm helping Lord Diablo and also supporting them and also DJ Mouth with their project. And I also have other people I need to help. But there will be another screen pack that I already announced on the summer. Uh, sadly, I'm gonna have to put that one on hold because of the fact that I got a lot of people I gotta help. But once okay. I, I, once I, once I have more free time, once I have more free time, I will definitely gonna be releasing something that they always wanted to see, the Eichmann version of Mika. But it's not gonna be called Mika; it's gonna be called Ika. Mm. Mm. You need a cape. You sound like a superhero. <laughs> <laughs> it sound like this all the time, guys. Come on. <laughs> well, right. uh, obviously, Old Gamer's uh, channel will be down in the description. He makes awesome tutorials. He makes a lot of entertaining stuff. So do make sure to check everyone here out. 
Uh, with everything said, I hope everyone enjoyed themselves. And as always, I wish upon everyone to have a wonderful day.